the presence of the Lord is in the room with us, and he is ready to encounter us and touch every single one of us as our next speakers come up. Amen. As I'm up here, I just want to give honor to the man of God of this house. If we could all honor pa Pastor Nikki, Lord, we, we just want to bless God for your life um, and for allowing this conference to happen, for anointing and consecrating so many powerful women of God, powerful pastors and ministers that you've consecrated. We just want to say God bless you, Papa. We also want to say God bless you, Mommy. Thank you for overseeing this program and just your overseeing and your love and everything during this process. We want to say thank you, Mommy. We love you and we appreciate you so much. Amen. So I'm going to introduce our next speaker um, who powered this powerful conference. We want to say God bless you, LP Shayna, and thank you for just allowing God to use you to bring this forth. Um, LP Shayna is a pastor here at Holy Hill Chapel. She is a light to everyone who she encounters. Um, and I believe that we are going to be blessed by the words that she is going to give today. We want to welcome Lady Pastor Shayna up. Amen. Can we just make a joyful noise to the Lord? Has the Lord been good to somebody today? His presence is so strong in this room. And I just praise the Lord for his glory. I praise the Lord for his grace. His glory is reigning in this place. His glory is reigning in this place. You are being soaked in the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. I need to kneel real quick. Just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are so good. You are so good. You are so magnificent in all of your ways, oh God. I thank you, oh Father, for your grace, oh God. I thank you, oh Father, that this conference came to pass, oh God. That you did not let the spirit of delay have its way, oh God. I thank you, oh Father, that you did not let anything rise up against this conference, oh God. But you perfected it, oh God. You saw to it to come to completion, oh God. And we just give you all the glory. I praise you, oh God, for each and every individual that has helped put this conference together, oh God. I thank you, oh Father, for all of the provisions that have been made, oh God, to bless your women, to bless your men, to bless your children, oh God. We just yield to the Holy Spirit, oh Father. I thank you, oh Father, for us able to yield to the Holy Spirit, oh God. I thank you, oh Father, we will not leave here the same, oh God. Father, I bless your name for the prophet and the man of God of this house, oh Lord. I thank you, O oh Father, that you sent me here God, to encounter, encounter such a man oh God, that is after your heart, O oh God. I thank you, O oh Father, and I bless your name for his life. And I thank you, O oh Father, for our first lady, O oh God. I thank you, O oh Father, that even from the first embrace with her, O oh God, that she encountered me with love, O oh God, in a time where I needed love the most, oh God. You sent me to a place, oh God, where I could have a spiritual family, oh God, where I could pick up the phone, oh God, and I could call on one of my sisters. I could call on one of my brothers, and they would give me scriptural, oh God, counseling, oh God. They would give me scriptural, oh God, revelation, oh Lord, and I just praise your name, oh God. I thank you, oh Father, that even in this last season that you have brought me through, oh God, that you, oh God, have shown me, oh God, the cries of your children, oh God. As I have been at work, oh God, there were many days where I woke up, oh God, and I asked, why am I even going there today? But Lord, you sent someone, oh God. You sent someone, oh God. And you said, Lord, this is, you said, Shana, this is why I sent you, oh God. Father, I just give you all the glory. I give you all the adoration, oh God. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oh, my Lord. I mean, today it's been so powerful, and I'm just so humbled for this opportunity. I remember when the Lord called me into ministry when I was um, a sophomore year in, in my sophomore year of college. And, you know, I was trying to get right, but I was seeking so many different things. I was seeking the motivational speakers. Of course, I had my Bible, I've, and I, I want to give honor to my mother who's here today. 
Because through it all, it didn't matter what it looked like. It didn't matter what she was going through. Through it all, she planted the word of God into my heart. And even when I strayed away, he brought me back to him because I was the prodigal son. And I remember in my college year, my sophomore year, I was in all manners of sin. And he called me, and I, I, I knew that I wanted to uplift people. I wanted to help people do better in life. I knew how it felt to be so loved. I knew what it felt like to want to give up. But then I said, okay, God, I'm going to go into motivational speaking if this is the avenue. But then the Lord said, if I send you, you're you're going to go where I tell you to go. He said, you will not speak unless you're speaking from me. So I yield my mouth unto him. I yield my spirit unto him because he called me. Even when I was filthy in sin, he took off that dirty garment and he clothed me in righteous clothes. Hallelujah, and I just give God all the honor and all the praise. You know, as we were, um, I'm so thankful for this house. <laughs> this is a prophetic house, and, um, you know, we were doing the outlines, and we sent out the topics for everybody of what they're going to be preaching on, and I, you know, I went to go study for the word and study for my topic, and I sought the Lord on, Lord, what do you want your, your ladies to hear? What do you want the people to hear, oh God? What is the message that you have for them? So I went to one book, and I was, you know, trying to study this person and trying to study this person's story because I came to tell you to rise up. Hey. So I wanted to see individuals who had to rise up. So as I prepared for my outline, how many of y'all know we have to yield to the Holy Spirit? Amen. So I prepared for my outline. He actually sent me to Matthew. He sent me to Matthew 7, 24 through 27. And I have just seen how the Lord has summarized all of the messages that we have. And, I, and it makes sense now. I'm like, okay, Lord, this is why you, this is why you gave me this word. Wow. Because this LP Benedict was right there. It just clicked. Because I'm going to be talking to you about the rain. Hallelujah. I also want to um, celebrate and welcome my friend Atara, who's with us today. And I want to thank her for sponsoring um, our drinks, our energy drinks. They're healthy drinks. And I just give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the adoration for her life. She's been such a beacon of light in my life as well. Hallelujah. So, all right. So we're going to go to Matthew 7. 24 through 27 and it reads therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock the rain fell the rivers rose the winds blew and pounded that house yet it didn't collapse because its foundation was on the rock but everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand the rain fell the same thing happened the rain fell the rivers rose the winds blew and pounded that house but what happened it collapsed and not only did it collapse, but it collapsed with a great crash. So I came to talk to you about the foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the prophetic, the prophetic movement in this house is so powerful because as she was talking about the glory cloud, I said, Lord, it's so interesting how you gave me a word about rain. And right now we're already talking about the cloud because how many of you know that the rain comes from the cloud? And I see the Lord shout us today with his glory hallelujah so I want to ask you but I know many of you this is kind of like a rhetorical question because we're all saved and saints and children of God so maybe this is for somebody that's watching online but I want to ask what are you building your life on what is the foundation that you are building your life on because as I read that word, there was the question, what are you building your life on and in the name of who? 
Sometimes we try to build our life on psychology. So we read Confucius and we wonder why we're confused. We read Socrates, we read Plato. And is there some wisdom in there? Yeah, there's some nuggets of wisdom, but there's no wisdom like the wisdom of the word of God because he said that I know the end from the beginning. So he knows everything. He is omnipotent and omniscient. Hallelujah. So what are you building your life on? Just check your foundation. Because even though my mom from a young age woke us up at 5 o'clock in the morning, probably since I was about Benjamin's age, who's four, to pray, to read the word, thank God for that foundation. But I had to allow the Lord to build a new foundation. It couldn't just be because my mom had taught me the word. I had to choose to build the foundation of my life on the word. So there first must be a choice. There must be a choice. And in the name of who are you building your, your life on? Some people build on false religions and doctrines. Some people build their, their life on on or in the name of their 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 last name oh we're building the Apple legacy some people built their life in the name of wanting to gain worldly success and making a name for themselves but you must come to the place where you build your life on the word of God and in the name of Jesus you know when we build our life and the foundation, it encompasses our values and the principles in which we live by. You, can, you know what someone believes and what they think and what is in their heart by what they do. You don't have to question it because their actions speak louder than words. And I've always lived by that. I remember when me and my husband were courting and we were going through our young craze. And I said, I'm tired of you talking. Show me something. Come on, yeah. Amen. I love you, honey. <laughs> but, and he showed me, and he's still showing me. And I thank God, because I think, and this is by the way, but I think so many of us miss out on our kingdom spouse because of the season that we're in and because of the judgment that we're in. So you have to pray, because I saw gold in this man. And had I been looking by the current situation, I would have been a single mother and, and my son would have been born out of wedlock. But thank God that I married that man. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So is it possible, and maybe this is for somebody online, but is it possible that you have been letting someone else build your life because if you are not intentionally building your life on the word of God or in, in, the, na and in the name of Jesus, then you are allowing someone or something else to build your life for you, whether you know it or not, whether you want to believe it or not, whether you want to accept it or not. And that was, um, you know, the Lord preach, gives me so many messages. And he said, I want you to give a message on get real with yourself. So I'm just going to say get real with yourself real quick, right? Because we have to know that if we're not in his word and, 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 and believing in the power of the name of Jesus, then something else is built in our life. Hallelujah. How do you know when something else is built in your life? When there's no prayer and, no, and meditation. When you're not seeking the Lord on his plans and his purposes for your life. When you're not consistently in his presence and asking him how his will can be done on earth through you for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. A wise man builds. It says, therefore, everyone who hears these words and acts on them will be like a wise man. So first you have to hear. You know, sometimes we got to pray for the Lord to unclog our ears because our spiritual ears are so clogged up that we can't even hear the voice of God. So when we hear anything, it sounds like the voice of God. But he has such a fine voice. He has such a, a, a voice that you know when it's him. But if you're not in his presence, then it could be so easy to confuse his voice with other voices. A wise man builds. That means that a wise man or woman takes responsibility for the affairs of his or her life. When you build 
Building means that you're becoming greater in extent. You're becoming greater in volume. You're becoming greater in the amount of service. You're becoming greater in the number of your in the number of your activities for the Lord. There should be increase building your life on the foundation of God. You know, as I was preparing this message, the Lord said building requires strategic planning. And LP, LP Lloyds gave us such a powerful message on strategic planning. It requires consulting an expert. You know, sometimes we have experts in many different fields and many different trades. But God is the ultimate expert. And I bless LP Howard for giving us that powerful word on service because for someone to be consistently and faithfully in the things of God, they are being an expert in the things of God. It requires, when you're building, it requires a project manager. You need someone to move the plan forward. So I thank God for LP Mabel's. Do y'all see how this is all coming together? I thank God for her message on divine relationships because you have to have somebody that's helping you to move the plan of God forward. And of course, his Holy Spirit is our ultimate helper. But God Almighty is an extraordinary strategist. Hallelujah. The difference between listening and hearing. You know, listening doesn't really require you to focus, nor does it require your intention. You can just be doing something and listening, whether there's people talking, music in the background. There can be many different things happening around you. But just because your ears are listening doesn't mean that you're hearing. So God is telling us that we must hear. Hearing is active. Hearing means that you are listening actively. You are listening to understand. You are listening with intent. You are listening to process the information that is being relayed. Hearing requires you to fine tune your attention and be focused. So what are you focusing on? I must focus on what God is saying. As I hear, he says I must respond by doing. His word says that a wise man builds his house on the rock and er because of everyone who hears the words of his, and then they act. So day and night, we must seek him day and night. That means that we must consistently seek him. So I'm going to wrap it up with the rain because it says that the rain fell, the rivers rose, the winds blew and pounded that house. You know, sometimes the rain is just light, you know, it's sprinkling. But then, then there are other times where you, it doesn't matter how loud you turn the TV up, it doesn't matter how loud, whatever it is that you have going on, all you hear is and you're like, what is that? And it's the rain. And sometimes that's how our life feels like. It feels like we're constantly in a rainy season. Lord, when are you going to deliver me from this health crisis? Lord, when are you going to answer those unanswered prayers? I keep seeking your face. And the word says that a heart that is discouraged becomes weary. And you, you, you say, Lord, when is this rain going to clear up? When are, when, you know, how am I in this place for so long? It's because you're in a rainy season. But I came to encourage you today to look at the rain different because as you read the word of God, you see that when he, when it rains, it pours down his glory. But also, nothing grows without rain. It's necessary. Usually it seems dark and gloomy when it's raining outside. It's usually dark and gloomy. gloomy. Sometimes the sun is shining. And I just want you to think about your life and how we go through these seasons. It seems dark and gloomy. It can become very foggy and humid to where you feel like you can't even breathe. Sometimes it feels like, Lord, if I have to wake up again, I'm going to even need your help just to take another breath, oh God. Because it's feeling foggy in your life. The humidity is so strong. There are two rainy seasons, though. This is the good part. There's the fall and there's the spring. The fall is when everything looks like it's dying. The leaves are falling. The flowers are going back to the ground. The grass looks like it's withering. 
and things just look like it's dying around you. But how many of you know that that just means that when the spring comes, that it's going to bloom even brighter. You're going to come back even stronger. The word of God says, and this is one thing that kept me going. And, 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 and two, I got to this place because even though I was stuck in sin in my sophomore year of college, and I was like, Lord, I want to get out of this sin. I don't want to keep throwing my body to the left and the right. I don't want to just keep drinking anytime I feel like it. I don't want to keep smoking this weed. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But the Lord, but the Lord, his word says that when a righteous man falls down, he gets back up. So I want to tell you that today, if you've been falling down, you're going to bounce back up. If you fall back down, he says that you will get back up. If we had a ball right here, if I bounced it, it would bounce. And the, and, and, and the good thing about it is that when it comes to the pressures of life, the harder you bounce it, the higher it goes back up. You are not defeated. Maybe this is for you online. You are not defeated. Don't let the enemy continue to whisper in your ear. Don't let the enemy continue to tell you to give up. Don't let the enemy continue to tell you that it's over. Don't let the enemy continue to tell you that there's no hope. Don't let the enemy continue to whisper in your ear his lies and deception. Thank you, LP Lois, for giving us that insight. Amen. Deuteronomy 32. One through four says, listen, you heavens, and I will speak. Hear you, earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teachings fall like rain, and the words descend like dew. Let the showers on the new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. I will proclaim, I will announce publicly the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock. His works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong. So you got to look at the rain differently. Hallelujah. So I want you to stop praying that the rain would end in your life. I know it's hard. I know that it's tough. But God says that he who is in you is more mightier than the one that is outside of you. He's stronger. He's your helper. He's your comforter. So David said, I had to encourage myself in the Lord. That means that he was going through a fiery trial, and it looked like he couldn't turn to his wife. It looked like he couldn't turn to his papa. It looked like he couldn't turn to his sister, and he had to encourage himself in the Lord. And he said, Lord, I will praise you. I will lift up your name unto the high. Ah, I will praise you in the midst of the storm. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. I will not withhold my praise for you because even if I don't get the job, even if I don't get the house, even if I don't get the child, even if I don't get whatever it is I'm seeking you for, when lies are coming against me, when enemies are circling around me, I will praise you in the midst of my enemies. You will make a table for me and you will put them to shame. You will silence their mouth. You got to rise up in the spirit. The main thing the enemy wants you to do is be quiet. He wants you to put a muzzle on your mouth. He wants to shut you up. Share your testimony. Oh, okay, we're going to see. Share it. Let him see. Because he said that we overcame by the power of our testimony and by the blood of the lamb. I'm going to read this scripture. It says Isaiah 43, 1 through 2. And it says, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who created you, he who formed you, do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by my name. You are mine. When you pass through the water, oh, what? When you pass through the water, you just passing through. It can't overtake you because he is with you. How can the water overtake you if God himself is with you? That's why our lives must be built and founded on the word of God and in the name of Jesus. Because he is the only one 
that when we pass through the rivers, they won't sweep over us. And when we walk through the fire, we won't be burned. And let me tell you, if I saw, if this building was on fire, I would be so tempted to run to the door. Run as quickly as I can. Where's my children? Where's, you know, where are my children? That's all. Any other thing, forget it. Let's get out. But he said, when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. So you're going to walk through the situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I just came to say that it's time to rise up again. It's time to rise up again. I don't know who this word is for, but it's time to rise up again. Thank you, Jesus, for your word, oh God. Thank you, Father, for your glory. I'm just going to sing this one little song that this message was founded on. Rise up, rise up, rise up, mighty warrior. Rise up, rise up, rise up, mighty warrior. Thank you, Jesus. 